Thank you, and welcome to Form I-9, your 2017 update. So first, let's talk about what we're going to review today. So first, we're going to talk about working in the United States and employment verification. So we're really going to understand the laws and requirements around employment verification and really what the law is trying to do in regards to individuals working in the United States. So we're going to really dive into just understanding the history why this is so important and really what the government is trying to accomplish with these laws. We're going to talk about discrimination requirements. So what things do you need to be aware of from a discrimination perspective? And this is super duper important. So we're going to take a, a good chunk of time to really understand discrimination because I would say 90% of the time when employers get in trouble for discrimination, it's not intended. And a lot of times employers don't always necessarily understand why they're in a discrimination case because they didn't believe they did anything incorrectly. So we're going to talk about that and kind of understand the importance of the individuals who are doing your I-9 process, make sure that they're well trained and know how to handle this process accurately. We're going to also talk about how to properly complete that I-9. So we're going to go section by section of the form. We're going to talk about the changes and the updates all through July of 2017. So we even had um, updates to the form as soon as July of 2017. So we're still all getting used to a new form. It seems like with the I-9 that we go a long length of time without having any updates. And then we had one last November, and now we had another one in July. So really going to focus on understanding those changes how they impact you and what to watch out for to make sure you don't make errors. When you do make an error on the I-9, how do you properly correct the mistake? How do you correct the mistake without having um, legal implications of that, especially during an audit situation? So we're going to talk about how do you properly correct your I-9s. We're going to talk about storage and retention. How long should you store the forms? In what formats can you store the forms? A lot of employers now are doing much more in regards to electronic storage of documentation. What requirements do you need to follow for electronic storage of the document? Um, and then how long do you keep it? And in what format is the best format to keep it in? We'll round out today just understanding E-Verify. How can E-Verify help you as an employer? and make your job a little bit easier. Sometimes some employers feel like E-Verify makes their job harder, but we want to go through E-Verify and understand the implications of it. Some of you, depending on what state you are in in the United States, are required to do E-Verify versus individuals of other states who may not be. So we're going to talk about that. And then we'll have a brief time at the end for question and answer. So as you can see, we've got a lot to cover in a short period of time, so let's get started. So working in the United States in employment verification, where did this start and what was the intent of the law? So this all started back in 1986 with the Immigration Reform and Control Act. It has um, morphed into many um, it, more things than it originally was intended to be. The law itself of this act has not changed much, but we have a lot more conversation here within the United States about immigration and the right to work here in the United States. So it's important that we kind of step back and really understand, as an employer, what was the intent of this law on you and how it was to impact you as an employer. So really what the law states is that you as an employer are prohibited from knowingly hiring individuals who do not have work authorization here in the United States. The key word in that sentence is knowingly. So depending on what legal counsel you will get for assisting you with I-9s or if you have I-9 concerns or questions, your legal counsel um, some of them will be will look at that word knowingly a little bit different than others. So it's important to really understand what does that mean? Really, what does the government trying to accomplish? And really what the government is trying to accomplish is to say, you as an employer should reasonably 
make every effort to obtain documentation to validate that you are hiring someone who is legally authorized to work in the United States. Does that mean that some of you may not have individuals who are not authorized to work within your staff? Yes, you may. But if you have reviewed the accurate documentation and it appears to be genuine, so we're going to talk about that later in the webinar today, it's important to understand that as employers, you are not required by law to become document experts. So it, you know your intent is not for you as HR individuals or site managers who may be doing I-9s and you're attending this webinar to better understand it. It's not intended for you to go to a class to understand, well, the government prints this document this way, and if it's printed with this color, it's not accurate. 